in the name of Jesus who gathers us in for this time of worship and praise, welcome to Westminster, an affirming ministry in the United Church of Canada. So good to have all of you with us, some in person and some online. If this is your first visit with us, a special welcome goes out to you. So just a few announcements before we start. Uh, for our online congregation, we will be having communion in our service. So if you haven't done so already, please uh, gather up your elements, so bread and juice, tea and toast, whatever you like. For those of us here in the sanctuary, unfortunately, we can't allow anyone to partake during the communion liturgy. But here's what we can do. On your way out of the church after worship, there will be a basket containing little cups that look like this. On the top, you probably can't see from here, there's a tiny wafer on the top. So when you peel that back, that's your bread. There's another tab that you pull back, and then you can drink the juice. Our hope is that you can have your communion as a family at home um, after our service. We really wish we could allow, but the only way to partake is to take off your mask. And we really are going to insist everyone keep their mask fully over your nose and mouth uh, throughout our entire service. So don't forget on your way out to pick up uh, your traveling communion to take with you on the way. I know it's odd. <laughs> Everything's odd. Uh, also, I won't be greeting at the back door uh, as I usually do uh, after worship, um, just because we don't want a backlog at the door and we want folks to just be able to move freely toward the door. So a Merry Christmas to one and all. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas season. <laughs> The land on which we worship tonight is land that has been walked on, hunted on, and lived on for thousands of years. It is the traditional land of the Anishinaabe and the ancestral territory of the Fort William First Nation. We acknowledge with gratitude the good stewardship of this land from generation to generation, and we are grateful today for the beauty and abundance around us. May we always remember the story of this land and always try to live upon it with respect, humility, and thanksgiving. Now we light this special candle to remember all of the children who suffered and died in Indian residential schools. Tonight we light all of the candles in our Advent waiting time, <coughs> the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. On this Christmas Eve, we also light the Christ candle to remember the birth of Jesus, born to bring his light and love into our world. May the light of the Christ child shine in all of us as we approach the manger with humility and joy. Christmas joy. Thank you for guiding us through this season of watching, waiting, and wonder. We are filled with awe as we come to the stable to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Be with us now as we offer prayer and praise in the name of Jesus, light of the world, Prince of Peace. Amen.
Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. So, the first scripture reading is Isaiah 9, verses 2 to 4, and 6 to 7. People who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice, and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Now turn to the Gospel reading, which I guess won't surprise anyone, is the Christmas story. As recounted by Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken when Quir Quirinius was <coughs> governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Gal Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good, noise. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, 
Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the witness of God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. made room for them. The innkeeper, I mean. What if he had made room for Mary and Joseph? What if he had looked into Mary's eyes and really, really looked at her and felt compassion? What if the innkeeper had looked at Joseph a little bit more closely? Would he have registered the panic on Joseph's face? What if that innkeeper had opened up his heart to this couple? Well, I suspect we would be hearing a very different story tonight. We would be hearing about a kind innkeeper who made room for Mary and Joseph, even though his inn was full to capacity. We might be hearing about how he asked other guests to share their rooms so that Mary and Joseph could have a space for themselves. Or we might even have he heard the innkeeper saying to them, here, you two take my room. I won't be sleeping much tonight anyway. 
And that story would have come down through the ages as the first warm welcome of the Christ child, even before he was born. Every nativity scene would have a kind innkeeper in it. And as much as we love to romanticize the stable, Mary would have had a much more comfortable place to give birth. I think the, the innkeeper missed an opportunity. God was doing a new thing in these two tired travelers. But I imagine the innkeeper barely looked up from his work as he said, I have no room for you, and waved them off. I think he missed out. If the innkeeper had been paying attention, he might have seen more than just another couple looking for a room. But he did not see them at all. The innkeeper is our reminder that every day we have opportunities to see the divine spark, the sacredness in the people around us. He is our reminder that God is doing a new thing in them and through them. God is always doing a new thing in you, in me, in all of us. And it's easy to forget that, isn't it? It's easy to muddle through the days and get caught up in life's busyness, especially at this time of year, just as the innkeeper was. He was a busy guy that night. He had a full inn. It's easy to forget that the people around us are children of the holy, shining the light of God's goodness by simply being. Acts of kindness and compassion given and received can only help to make everyone's light shine the brighter. The Christmas story that Craig read for us from Luke's Gospel, we hear it year by year. And one of the reasons I love it, and it's one of my favorites, is how accessible it is. And when I say it's accessible, I mean we can place ourselves in it easily. Because so much of what's happening here is familiar to us. You can imagine yourself on a hillside. Maybe there's some sheep, maybe there isn't. You can see yourself on a hillside on a quiet night. The stars are just shining. You can imagine Joseph's anxious presence during the birth. And you can imagine the joy that Mary feels when her labor is over and she holds her son for the first time. None of that is too hard for us to conjure in our imaginations. The story hits home for us because everything that happens in it is so human. It's so ordinary, really. Well, with the notable exception of the choir of angels, but we have our own here tonight. The thing is, because Jesus is born into such ordinary yet extraordinary circumstances, his birth story is easy for us to imagine ourselves being a part of. And the blessing is that we can be a part of it. You can be part of the Christmas story. You only need to make room for it. You only need to make room for God to do a new thing through you. You see, the innkeeper missed that opportunity to host the sacredness of Jesus' birth, but you don't have to miss out. All it takes is a pause, just long enough to make room in your heart and your mind and your spirit for the holiness that's right in front of you. That tired person at the checkout, been on their feet for hours, wearing a mask. Pause, just for a moment, and see them. You may not know their story, but you do know their essential humanity. And it can only add to their day when you look at them 
Really look at them. Make your eyes smile, because they can't see this part, but they can see your eyes. Make your eyes smile and thank them for what they do. The same goes for our hospital and medical staff, for teachers and administrators, for postal workers and delivery staff, bus drivers, long-term care workers, the people who collect our garbage and recycling, and every other essential worker doing their jobs in these challenging times. They're stressed, they're tired, they're worried, like we all are. Just like Mary and Joseph after their long journey. If you share that exhaustion and stress this Christmas season, I hope you come across people who make room for you, who give you those short glimmers of joy that provide a rest for your weary soul. And if you're not feeling overwhelmed and exhausted, then you are perfectly placed to make room in your heart and your prayers for those who are. Consider it the best gift you can give this Christmas. When we truly see one another and recognize what we share in common, that God treasures each of us and is doing a new thing in all of us, well, we become part of one another's stories, don't we? And even if it's only for that brief moment, it's an opportunity for a moment of kindness in a chaotic world. It's an opportunity to make someone else's day better. You see, when we look in one another's eyes, we catch a glimpse of God looking back at us. When we care for one another, lifting up the least and the lost, feeding the hungry, seeking justice, healing our planet, when we do all of that, we are making room for God to work in us and through us for the blessing of our world. This Christmas and all through the year. Let's make room for Jesus in our hearts, in our spirits, in our lives. Merry Christmas, everyone. And may God's name be great. <laughs>
In this season of giving and generosity, we are truly grateful for any offering we receive. Your gifts make the work of our ministry possible, and we are grateful. In the spirit of the season, like the wise men with their gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we now present our offering.
Thank you, choir. What a gift tonight. Here at Westminster, we have an open table, and that means nothing bars you from sharing in this feast, except your mask. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just yeah. yeah. Your age, your denominational ties, if you have any, or any rites of passage within a Christian tradition, those simply don't matter here. The only requirement is that you wish to partake of the bread and the cup. At this table, all are welcome, and all means all. Let's begin. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Holy One, we hear these words from the Gospel and we rejoice. For your word created light, energy, and order. You created a world meant for justice and wholeness, a place designed for peace and beauty. In our own search for goodness, we found our home in your grace. We discovered our faith. Even so, despite the prophets and the promise, despite covenant and counsel, creation was twisted by the absence of light in people's living. Creation groaned, gasping out its life in despair. Then quietly in dirt and dust, in straw and suffering, a tiny child was born, heralding a new beginning, a new life a new hope. What was to become of such a gift in such a place? The child grew, shining light into places of brokenness, comforting some and challenging others. He was betrayed, suffered, and died, but that was not the end of his story. It was another new beginning. So it is that on this wondrous night we join with the angels, the shepherds, and the communion of saints surrounding us all, rejoicing together, saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We remember Jesus, who on the night before he died shared bread and cup with his friends and asked them to hold that moment sacred in remembrance of him. We hold to that promise as we break the bread, share the cup, and recall the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ has risen. risen. Christ will come again. So we pray, O God, send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that all who share in this loaf and cup may be the body of Christ. Light, life, and love in the world. In this hope and as your people, we praise you. Through Christ, Through Christ with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. Amen. God, on this holy night, we also remember all those with whom you would have us share in your feast. We pray now for all who are in sorrow or in pain, all who are grieving, all who are ill or lonely, all who live with fear, oppression, or hunger, all whom the world counts as least and last. We pray for your church and its ministries for nations as they strive for peace and justice, for the earth and the fragile web of life we share. We pray for our families and our friends. And tonight we remember the members of the Finnish community here in Thunder Bay after the loss of the Finnish labor temple by fire. God, we lift up to you all the concerns that are held within our hearts. 
And now we pray together in the way that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Scripture tells us that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus sat for one last meal with his good friends. And after he had given thanks to God, he broke the bread, and he showed it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Every time you share it in this way, do it in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the meal, when he had given thanks to God, he poured the cup. And he showed it to his friends, saying, This cup holds the sign of the new covenant established by my suffering and dying. Every time you share it in this way, do it in remembrance of me. And so it is that tonight we remember. The bread of life. share with me, please, in the prayer after communion. Bless us, God, as we go out into this starry night, nurtured at your table, and filled with the peace of the Christ child. Amen. the joy of the shepherds, the wonder of the wise men, and the peace of the Christ child. Fill your hearts and your homes with peace this Christmas. And now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of us this night and every night. Amen. Turn that light on.